Kings chapter 21, actually, chapter 21. This is a great story, hello, that uh, the famed preacher R.G. Lee preached from hundreds and hundreds of times on payday someday. And I'm not gonna use it like he did. We'll pull out a verse here of the story, how that King Ahab, the wickedest man in the country, who was married to the wickedest woman in the country. That's a pitiful situation when the wickedest man's married to the wickedest woman. And he wanted Naboth's vineyard. And uh, Naboth didn't want to sell it. And he, the wicked woman, figured out a way for him to get it. And they killed Naboth and got his vineyard. And then I want you to look what the prophet said to him. 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 20. 1 Kings chapter 21 and verse 20. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And the preacher, Elijah, he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Thy sold thyself. Ahab sold something. Sold himself. A lot of people have done that. I want to use this a little thought tonight. And many times you see these for sale signs in people's yard. And it'll say, for sale by owner. Tonight, I want to use this, not for sale. Not for sale. According to the Bible tonight, there are uh, some things that should not be for sale in a person's life. There ought to be some things that's just not for sale. You meet some people and, and they'll say, man, I'd love to have that old car or that, or that old something, you know, like that. And, and they'll just look at you and say, sorry, that thing's not for sale. No price, no amount of money, no nothing can buy that. Now, I got to thinking about that this evening. And I thought, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Have I got anything that's not for sale? I thought, yes, I definitely, definitely do. Now, my forerunner sitting out there, I, many of y'all have seen it. I, you know, I've got some nice compliments on it. It's, it's a 2011. It'll be nine years old in just a few weeks. And it's got 109,000 miles on it. So it is not new by no stretch. Uh, but it, it's new to me. Ain't that right? And uh, I, I mean, it does exactly what I need it to do. Took it to camp last week, and I'm really enjoying driving it. Man, them things, they're just, they're just, they're just everything. They're a truck, they're a car, they're, they're an electric vehicle, they're a rugged, they're four-wheel drive. I mean, it's everything in one. That's the closest thing you can get to everything in one vehicle. But if you come up to me tonight and say, Brother Danny, I'll give you $50,000, son, I'd jerk your arm off. Yeah, I, sir, I, or 40, or 30. Uh, uh, or 25. Or, uh, listen, if you if you come back and you said, Brother Danny, I'll give you that, I'd say, deal, just like that. My house that I've lived in up there where I live since I was six years old, mom's house and my house up on the hill, I love that place. That's what my taxes is due on. My place, mom's place, and all them woods that were never used. And uh, uh, I, I love that place. It's home. I've had, I don't know how many people said, Danny, why don't you just move down there to, to Morgan and close to the church, you know, and everything. And, and I've actually thought about it. But I just thought, man, I don't, I, that's my home. That's where my roots are. I grew, I grew up there. I, actually, I thought about uh, grading off a place up here on this mountain and putting a cabin up there uh, years ago. Uh, overlooking them mountains, and that'd be a beautiful spot. Uh, but and and let, let the church own it. I thought about that. Uh, but you know what? Uh, that's home. But I'll tell you one thing: if you come up tonight and said, "I'll give you a million dollars cash for everything you got up there," I could get over my home uh, string roots. I sure could. For five hundred thousand, I, I could. Uh, uh, I sure could. I sure could. Uh, uh, my shoes, this suit I got on. Uh, uh, you know, you you know, you got the price. It, you'll you'll sell it. Most stuff I got is for sale. But there are some things. There are some things that you got to make up your mind. I'm not selling these. Not for sale. Not negotiating. Not. Oh my goodness! I heard a preacher say one time. 
He's talking about uh, uh, falling into sin, and and this and this preacher said, "Well, I tell you one thing. I hope the devil don't ever hit me." And he's talking about some Britney Spears, somebody. And he said, well, "Boy, I tell you one thing. If I had a chance to have her, I'd just go with it." Or something. I said, "Man, you're crazy. You are crazy." And that's why. And I don't know if he's joking or not. But it didn't sound like it. I thought, Lord, have mercy, man. Listen, brother. Uh, if you had every movie star in the world, I've, I guarantee you, I've, I've had uh, ladies in church who said that about certain, uh, you know, Brad Pitt or somebody. Said, well, you know, I believe men faithful and everything, brother Danny. But if Brad Pitt called me, I'm gone. Uh, listen, well, you ain't much for Christians. What you ain't, Amen. Listen. And Brad Pitt's breath stinks in the morning just like your husband's. And Britney Spears' armpit stinks and her old bald head has to be shined uh, just like everybody else's. Amen. They ain't no different than nobody else. There ought to be some things that are not for sale. Just absolutely not for sale. Now, I want to say a few things about that this evening. Now, I want all you young people to listen real carefully. Number one, some people sell out for property. I just I just read you this story here about King Ahab, and he and he, he had a plot with his lover uh, Jezebel to get uh, 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 his wife to get Naboth property. Did you know some people sell out their morals and sell out their peace with God for property? It's it's on record. I heard about a man who um, uh, or you hear about these stories where that. Um, the husband has a lot of stuff and the wife and her, her lover meet uh, and they plot to get the husband's stuff. I mean, it happens all the time. That's what they make them movies on, on TV out of. And, and she's over here and, and she hires somebody to kill the husband so they can get his land and so they can get his stuff like that, you know, and everything. I heard about a, a, there's a case up there in Marion years ago up there on what we call Murder Mountain. Some of y'all know up there, up above Marion, up past Linville Falls up there. And uh, the reason we call it Murder Mountain, there's a man took his wife up there and uh, she fell off and got killed. That was his story. Uh, but there were signs of a struggle and they left the kids in, down in Marion in a motel. I, I mean, the man left the kids in a motel and went up on the mountain and she accidentally fell off. Uh, you know, take a picture, honey. I'll take a picture, honey. Back up. Back up just a little bit more. <laughs> Back up just a little bit more, and boom, she's gone. And it just so happened that he took out a big insurance policy on her uh, probably about a year before that. He was charged with murder. I don't know if they ever got him for that or not. Uh, but I tell you what that fellow does, the way it looks, uh, unless that's very, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, that is very fishy. And he uh, sold out for property or moved to another place or something like that. Um, uh, many, many, many sell out for property. I know of singers. Did you know that most country years ago and many rock singers started off singing in church? Did you know that? Many of them, many of them. I remember Dolly Parton, I think her grandfather was a preacher, a, whole, uh, a, a Pentecostal preacher, and Dolly started singing in church when she was about that high. And I, I read it over there at Dollywood at one of them things. I was reading, I was going through that museum or something, I was just reading about her life, and she said, uh, Grandpa was an old-time preacher, man. You know. I was, and uh, and she, she said uh, they didn't have a car, and she was about seven or eight years old. Something, her daddy finally got a car, and they started going to church on Sunday night and Wednesday night, and she started singing in church. And somehow down the road, uh, she got off track. And she got backslid and sold out. Now, I think she might have got a little more right here in the last few years. But there was for a while there, people said, no, Brother Danny, she's a good Christian woman. Yeah, I know. I know she's probably going to come out with a movie, Best Little Sunday School in Tennessee here pretty soon. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, they, uh, they, uh, uh, she sold out. Some are sold out. So there comes a point when those singers get real good that they'll say, you want a deal? Britney Spears did that. Uh, they said Britney Spears was a little musketeer. She was a little cute little girl. She could sing. She was talented. She was pretty. Had everything, the whole package, brother, right there. And then they go sit down in a room when she's about 13, and they say, uh, I think she needs to do that. Then she sings that 
Hit me, baby, one more time. And went to the big time. Got very, very fun. Made millions. Then she got up a little older. And they said, that, that little mouse stuff ain't going to work no more. And they go down and sit in the room again. And sat down in this little room and said, Now, uh, you want to really get to the top? And they got a decision. Am I going to do it? Am I going to go back to my roots? Am I going to go back to church and serve God? Am I going to go? Or am I going to? And she sold out. She sold out. They sold out for property. I want to say tonight, number two, some sell out for profit. I've already talked about this. A better job. A better, more money. Crooked deals. There's a man in Luke chapter 12 who sold out. You know what he said one day? He got to looking around and he said, uh, I, I'm just, I've got so much money that I absolutely just don't know what to do with it. And I'm going to sell, tear down everything I got and just build me something bigger. And God said, you fool, I'm going to require your soul tonight and then whose shall these things be? Ladies and gentlemen, many people sell out for profit and sell out for money. Uh, uh, those movie stars, you know what they do? They take them in there. Uh, I mean, it's over and over and over. Marilyn Monroe, they said, I didn't know this till really just the last few years. And I've done a little research on Marilyn Monroe. She was the, 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 the queen of the goddess of the, of the, the 60s, her and old, uh, that, other, that other woman, Jane Mansfield. And uh, Marilyn Monroe was very popular and very pretty for back in those days. I mean, uh, they didn't have all this stuff to make you hip you out like, like they do now. And, uh, and she got popular and famous. And I saw some documentary or read somewhere that they, they, was, they was all kinds of filthy, wicked things that Marilyn Monroe had to do in order to get to the top because the industry was controlled by a bunch of old rich guys and they said, uh, you want this part? See me at the party tomorrow night. You want this part? See me on. And you girls are going to come to that point in life where you say, all I have to do is use my body or use my, my uh, sexual appeal and I can get favors from the boss or I can get and they sell out. And I'm telling you tonight, you know what you ought to do? You ought to say, listen, buddy, I, that's not for sale. My purity is not for sale. My virginity is not for sale. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money. I don't, you can offer me a, a leading a role in a movie. I'm not selling it. Not for sale. Not for sale. Judas sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. The Lord Jesus Christ. And yet many people uh, sold stuff for much, much less. Sold their virginity. Sold their, their uh, testimony. Sold their, their uh, moral standards. They sold out for profit. I, I know people, I'm, and I, I've seen women uh, telling us, say, boy, old so-and-so at work, she got her a sugar daddy, and she got her an old guy with a lot of money, and boy, she just run around him because he can buy her stuff. Listen, I, I don't see how a woman like that could close her eyes and sleep at night. How could you? I just sold out your moral standards and sold out what's right and sold out just to have money and things and beautiful clothes and diamonds. Uh, diamonds are not a girl's best friend, buddy. Jesus is your best friend. You hear me tonight? Some sell out for profit. Number three, some sell out for popularity. I was thinking about them, them, uh, them uh, Olsen twins. Them little old girls, they was cute when they was little. I don't even know what show they played on. I never heard of them until they got teenagers and we done a skit on them over there at the youth rally. But them little girls, uh, they was real cute when they was little and then they got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Man, when them girls got about 18 or 19, something happened to them. Something happened to them. They look awful now. Have you seen them? They look pitiful. Look scary. Uh, drugs has ruined their life. And listen, uh, them, them girls I had anything. There is no telling. When you get into that Hollywood, there's that um, MK Ultra stuff that you hear so much about Hollywood movie stars and the Illuminati and the, the hierarchy of the, and the Masonic uh, uh, influence in Hollywood, and, and they sell. They sit down somewhere and make a deal 
somewhere in an office room and there's a deal made because there's a bunch of rich people own Hollywood. And they go there and they say, all right, that's why when all them rock singers do that, with a 666 sign uh, uh, over the right eye. That's why they, they're always doing that sign of the pyramid. That's why they're always doing like that, uh, down, with, down with God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, up with Satan. That's why they all do that. They've made a deal back there in a the back room somewhere. I mean, have you seen that stuff LeBron James does? Before a game, all this ritualistic stuff. You know, all this stuff. Say something weird about that. He's not talking to Jesus. Uh, they got there all these, all these symbols and all these rituals advertising uh, for, for their, their cause. And you get into that Illuminati stuff, you get into the high. I've, I've heard honest rappers give testimonies, and they sat down and they said, you know what? They said, they took us in a room, they set us down, and they said, if you want to go to the next level, you want to go to the next level? Absolutely. Where you go, where you're going concerts in Chicago and Detroit and everything, I can put you on MTV. You can go from a hundred thousand followers to a hundred million followers. I can make you from a, a millionaire to a, a multi six fi, uh, mi, uh, figure millionaire uh, if you'll just do this. And they'll say, "What is it?" And they'll say, "Make a deal, sign your name in blood, give us some kind of." Now, now we're going to get into that stuff about selling your soul to the devil and stuff like that and let me just say something about it before I talk about it okay this is not a joke this is not just fun and games I know there are people that are in the entertainment industry and they take it as a joke so if you got the Illuminati and the big crowd of higher ups and the elite that own everything and you tell them you tell Katy Perry she grew up in a preacher's home her mom and daddy both was a preacher albeit not the great greatest. That, that at least they did go to church. And and Katy Perry sat down in that interview with that woman. I got it on video, and she said, I want to be like Amy Grant. I want to be the queen of, of gospel music. And then I sold my soul to the devil. And Amy uh, and, and Katy Perry admits that, that she sold her soul to the devil. Now, if you ask her, did you really sell your soul to the real devil? She would say, not, not the real devil. I don't even believe in a real. No, I'm talking about that big machine that runs Hollywood. That's the devil. So when they say I sold my soul to the devil, what they mean is that thing. But alas, the joke is on them. They really do sell it to the real devil and don't even realize it. Y'all understand what I'm trying to say? They think they're just selling it out for money and fame and fortune, but they really are making a deal with the real devil. That's where the blood comes in. That's where the sacrifice comes in. Uh, the, the video that I showed the kids uh, uh, a few weeks ago at that other camp down in Georgia where the man says, I will make you international icons. We will have to have a human sacrifice first. Because if you're willing to do that, you've got what it takes to go to the top. So they sat down in a room. And they'll say, you advertise for me. You get all these people to follow me, and I'll make you rich. Deal. Sign in blood. Look up that MK Ultra. Look up deals with the devil. Robert Johnson, the old blues guitarist of back many, many, many years ago, went down to the highways 49 and 61 in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And Robert Johnson, there's all kinds of rumors about him. Y'all know who Eric Clapton is? You remember, you know, one of the greatest guitars in the world. Uh, uh, Eric Clapton got his inspiration from Robert Johnson. And Robert Johnson was an old guy. They said he used to go down them old clubs down south where they'd all get in there in them barn and have dances at night, and he'd get a guitar, and they said it makes the worst racket you've ever heard in your life. They said, we never heard such a racket. Well, uh, he got down to business and took his guitar, and uh, um, he, he, he went down like that, and he couldn't play a lick. That's what they said, couldn't play a lick. And he go like that, you know, and everything. And he went down to the crossroads down there in Mississippi, Clarksdale. That's where the, um, the monkeys used to have a song. When I was growing up, take the last train to Clarksville. 
We didn't know what they was talking about. I had no idea. I don't even know if they did. But he went down there to Clarksdale and he sold, he, he, somehow or another, he met the devil there and they made a movie out of it. That kid, I forgot what that kid's name was, that played in the movie and he, and he uh, long time ago. And they made this movie where he went down to Clark's, uh, the, the crossroads. And buddy, he said he had an encounter with the devil and the devil taught him how to play. And when he come back, he started doing all that blue stuff and he got like a... Like that, you know. And people are like, I can't do it like he does. It's amazing. And you know how so I went down to the crossroad. All you old people remember that old song? Down at the crossroad. And brother, that thing became an anthem. And Robert Johnson made a deal with the devil. And they said when he come back, he could play guitar better than anybody in the world. So that means that Satan has the power. As a matter of fact, a lot of them songs, you know that uh, Stairway to Heaven? They don't even know where the lyrics come from. They said something dictated the lyrics to that song when they wrote it. Second most popular song of all time, Stairway to Heaven, rock song. It's an anthem. Who wrote it? The devil did. Them guys sold out. Now, you kids here tonight, there'll be somebody take you to uh, uh, at school. And they'll say, hey, you want to be in the in crowd? We're going to have a party. You know they initiate kids in college and in sororities and stuff where they initiate kids and you've got to do certain things before you can be in the group? The devil ain't going to just give you fame, fortune, and money, and girls, and, and party. You're going to pay a price for it. You're going to sell out. You know what we need? We need some young people that was up here a while ago and some older folks here tonight that said, let me tell you something, buddy. Look me in my two eyes. There's some things that ain't for sale. And one of my Bible and my church and my, my beliefs and my Christianity, and I'm not going to listen to your junk and go your way. Not for sale. Not for sale. For popularity. He said, oh, uh, Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page was a lead guitarist for Led Zeppelin. One of the most popular bands of all time. Y'all kids probably don't even know who Led Zeppelin is nowadays. But they, 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 they were icons, really, literally. And uh, Jimmy Page went and bought and lived in the mansion that Aleister Crowley lived in over there beside Loch Ness. You know, you know Loch Ness, the big lake? Lake Loch Ness. Uh, where the, the monster is, Nessie. Somebody asked me, do I believe in that thing? I said, I don't know. Might be. I don't know. I ain't never seen it. I ain't proved it ain't there. It wasn't there. It might have died of old age. But they, they took pictures of it and everything. I don't know if I believe in that or not. Like Bigfoot, they took pictures of him. I don't know if I believe in it or not. There could be. Could be. And I'm going to tell you something tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, you hear me and hear me well. Jimmy Page and them, he lived in that mansion and they said that thing was a place where a church was and burnt down. And Aleister Crowley was called the meanest, wickedest man in the world. He was the beast, 666. And they sold out. There's going to be a time come in your life where you're going to make a decision and the devil's going to say, hey, want to have fun? All you got to do is And you're going to make a choice in your mind. Am I going to give up what's right and go with it? Or I'm going to say, not for sale. Not for sale. Some people sell out for politics. We are living in a generation where thousands and thousands, there are people that literally would give everything they've got and their soul to to be elected to a high office in this country and probably have. Amen. Yes, sir, buddy. You say, Brother Danny, is that right? Yes, sir. Pilate is your perfect example in the Bible. You know the story there of when they brought Jesus to Pilate? I want to amen a little bit here. It's, you're way too quiet for this kind of preaching, y'all. Way too quiet. On the count of three. One, two, three. Amen. Thank you. 
I'm glad you're listening, but you're way too quiet. Uh, uh, you'll run the devil out of here if you'll help me a little bit. I'm going to tell you tonight, brother, oh, oh, uh, 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 Pilate come in there and Jesus came in and he, and he, you know what Pilate did? Pilate said, I find no fault in him. I can't. And they said, well, you're going to kill him? Uh, well, uh, well, I'm not, uh, but y'all can uh, if you want to. And Pilate would not take a stand. Why didn't Pilate just stand for what he believed? He wanted to get reelected. Did you hear me? Pilate wanted re-election. He said, now the election's coming up here. And he said, he's, he said, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to wash my hands. I'm not really for him. I'm not really against him. I'm going to let you people decide that. When he went to this party, he'd say, you're, you're right. I think he ought to die. But I, my hands are tied. I just really can't do it. When he went over there, he said, well, I think he's a good man. And everything. He sold out for politics. Wouldn't take a stand. Wouldn't take a stand. I'm telling you, brother, politicians are the crookedest bunch of people in this world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is sad. It is so sad. You you can't even, you, you say, well, why don't we elect some good good people in a uh, leadership position? If a person stands for God and what's right, it's impossible to get elected to a high office. I, I'm not saying it couldn't happen. It'd be a miracle of God. You have to compromise. You have to give. You have to be about a three-fourths of a hypocrite to even get a how. You know why? When there were this crowd there with you, when there were this crowd there with you, oh, yes, we're with you. Oh, yes, we're Christians. Oh, yes, we're with the LGBT, PQ, RX, say the rest of them they're going to invent. They said, oh, yes, we're with y'all. Oh, yes, you're, we're with you. And, brother, we'll not stand for nothing. Hey, you stand for God to the Bible just like it is, and let's see if you get elected in a high office. I wish I could. If I'm not, I could, I'd vote for him in a heartbeat, and I'm going to tell you who to vote for. Listen, it's come to the point in our country where, honest to goodness, I believe everybody ought to vote, but I wouldn't feel hard at you if you didn't vote at all. If, you, if that's what you've got to do to keep a clear conscience, I'm not saying you're wrong. I don't even, I don't know. What do you do nowadays? Uh, you know, it's come to the point where it's always going to be the lesser of two evils and ain't a whole lot of difference. If we're the far right, they're the far wrong. Amen? If we, uh, if, if we believe in, in pro-life, they believe in pro-death. We believe in letting the baby live. They believe in killing it. That's all there is to it. If anything, I can't stand. It's a politician. You know, I can't stand to listen to him. I can't, I just, my skin starts crawling. I say, will you shut up or say something one or the other? I, I, I just turn the channel. I can't stand because they say, uh, now, uh, we believe a woman should have a right to her reproductive system. And you're, you're, you shouldn't tell a woman about right. No, I don't remember anybody even saying that. Nobody said you didn't have a right to reproduce. Quit changing the subject, assuming your audience is dumb enough to fall for it. We're not against women's reproductive rights. We are against killing babies. Can you hear me? A woman has a right to do what she wants to with her own body. Are you deaf or dumb or both or think we are? Nobody said nothing about your body. We said you don't have a right to kill the baby's body. And I'm going to tell you something, people. I know it ain't popular, and I know people say, well, I, I just, you can say whatever you want to, but if it's wrong to kill it five minutes after it's born, it's wrong to kill it five minutes before it's born. It just is not, I mean, just moving it from here to there all of a sudden makes it wrong, and now they're saying that ain't even wrong. And you know what they say? Well, it don't know the difference. There's old people in rest homes don't know the difference. You're going to start killing them? No, it's murder. They have just as much the right to live. You say, well, I didn't want a baby. Should have thought of that before you hoard around all over the place some sell out for politics amen I'm telling you tonight brother listen you, 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 you believe in pro we believe in pro-life you believe in pro-death you believe in being politically correct we believe in being biblically correct don't sell out for politics finally I'm through don't sell out for pleasure John chapter 14, Herod sold out for pleasure. John the Baptist down there in jail. Little girl, 
don't know how old she was. Probably under under 25, probably. Herodias' daughter come in and danced. That and that we, somebody got on that at camp. Oh, it was Brother Rob. Man, he preached a powerful message. He preached a message. We can get it on CD on pornography and the power of that stuff. Every church in the United States needs to hear that. Every man in the United States needs to hear that sermon he preached the other day. That you're playing with fire, people. You're playing with something that's more powerful than you think it is. And he said, the power of a woman. A woman is the most beautiful part of all creation. And they can hypnotize a man. And they know it. And the world knows. That's why they can't sell dog food out there without putting a woman partly clothed on it. And Herod looked down and he said, John the Baptist preacher is in jail. And he even liked John. He listened to him preach on YouTube a few times. He sort of liked him. But his wife had that little girl come in and dance. He's about half drunk. And he said, you can have anything you want, baby, even to the half of the kingdom. And she goes over to her wicked mother and says, what do you think I ought to ask him? I've got everything I want. Brand new camel. As soon as I come out every year, I get one. I've got all the clothes. I've got all the diamonds. I've got, I, we're rich millionaires already. The mom said, get that preacher. I hate him. We can't even have fun. He ain't awful you'd have here. <laughs> I'll get him. I'll shut that mouth up. And don't you think for a second, buddy. Don't you think for a son. Them old, what's that old crazy woman, Alexandra Cortez? <laughs> all them people are like, listen, they'd shut my mouth in a second if they could do it and get away with it. She went and told him. She said, I want John the Baptist's head. You know what Herod could have done? He said, I'm the king. I was drunk. Get out of here. One little boy said, what he should have done is said, his head's in the other half of the kingdom. That would have been a good answer. He could have stopped it. He could have said no. He could have said no. I'm not doing that. I didn't mean that. Change my mind, I'm the king. But because of the pressure of them that stood around him, that's what it said, and those and, and the pressure from his wife and all them people, he said, go get him. And had that preacher's head cut off and brought in bloody head of John the Baptist. He sold out for pleasure. Tonight, that king's in hell. Herodias is in hell if they didn't get saved. They were for sale. They were for sale. There's going to come some people to you. There's going to come a good looking guy, girls. He's going to say, hey, you want to go somewhere? You want to smoke this? You want to you know, have, have a drink? Right then, you're going to have a choice to make. Am I going to sell out? God blessed me at camp. God blessed me at church all summer. God was good to me. Am I going to sell what I have for that? Or are you going to stand back and say, uh-uh, I ain't for sale. Laugh at me. Do whatever you want to. You say, what if he breaks up with you? That would be the best thing that could possibly happen. Break up with some idiot like that. Somebody wants to get you to sin. You, you better off by yourself. I try to tell them all the time, no boyfriend's bearing a bad boyfriend. No husband's bearing a bad husband. No wife's bearing a bad wife. Amen? Amen. Don't sell out. I wonder tonight, while she comes, and Brandon come, there'll be some kids here tonight, and mamas and daddies too, that get down on their knees before God and say, you know what? I'm not for sale. I'm just not for sale. They, they just some things. If you said I'm gonna give you a hundred thousand dollars for your forerunner, deal. See it, see it to, at the tag office tomorrow morning. We'll sign the papers. Done. 
So I'll give you a million dollars to your house, Brother Danny. We'll set up an appointment with the lawyer, brother. Get the deed drawn up. But you said, Brother Danny, I'll give you a million dollars if you'll throw that Bible down and never look at it again and go start helping me sell drugs. I'd say, I'm not for sale. You can jump late, buddy, as far as I'm concerned. You know, I think you ought to be nice to everybody, but they're going to have to come sometime when you just have to stand if they think you're being mean. They might think you're being mean, but just stand up and say, look, I, I ain't trying to be a holier than thou. I'm just, I, I just ain't going. If they, they bring out alcohol, say, look, you take me home, take me home or let me out right here. Let me out right here and I'll call my mom to come and get me. Tell them that. Tell them that. It ain't going to kill you. Might save your life. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for our church. Thank you for the special touch that you gave us this week at camp. I pray now in Jesus' name that you'd help every man, woman, boy, and girl here tonight to make up our mind that there's some things that are not for sale. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Something's already come to the altar this evening. How many of you meet me here tonight? Say, preacher. Brother Danny, you're right. You're right. There's just some things that I'm not selling my virginity. I'm not selling my peace of mind. I'm not going to do it. Early Jesus is Sing with him. Calling, calling for you. Come on tonight. Come on, ma'am. You want to get your heart right with God? Come on right now. See on the portals. He's waiting and watching. Watching for you and for me. Everybody, everybody sing now. Come home. Sing. Come home, ye who are weary, come. Come on, come on. I'm not for sale, preacher. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner. Come on home. Come on home this evening. You come right now. Why should we tarry when Jesus is Amen. pleading for you and for me? Amen. Why should we linger and heed not his mercy? Amen. Mercy's for you and for me. Hey, come home. Come home, ye who are weary, come home. Come on home tonight. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. So I'm still praying tonight. I'm, they can stay as long as, as long as they need to. Every time. I preach something like that. Somebody will write me letters. It'll happen this week probably. I, I guess you'll mention when I was preaching. And they'll say, what you're preaching ain't right. They'll say, how can you sell something that ain't yours? They'll say, your soul ain't yours to sell. They, they always do that. They think they're smart. I don't know where they... Somebody heard somebody say that and thought they're smart or something. That's dumb. You me tell what the Bible says? Maybe they should read their Bible and stay off YouTube for a while. The Bible said, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Your soul is yours. It is yours. And you can give it to the Lord, give it to the devil. You can take it to heaven or take it to hell. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? telling you tonight we're living in a messed up world people and it's getting worse every day the only thing that will keep you straight is this book 
and prayer and the Holy Spirit working in you. Amen. All right. I heard that, um, I, this ain't the message, but the, the pat preacher down there in Charlotte at that Elevation Church, he said, quote, the best Bible teacher alive today is Joyce Meyer. What? If that's the best Bible teacher we got today, buddy, I'm not trying to be ugly. And she is a good teacher. Joyce Meyer says some good things to help women and problems. And come. Really what she does, her thing is good. But the Bible? She don't teach Bible. She ain't no Bible teacher. Ask, ask her to give you some doctrine on coming events. That's how messed up we are in this country. It's all about your feelings and coping and your anxiety and your worry and how to deal with your, make your husband do what you want him to. That's basically the bottom line. So, uh, uh, holy mercy, we're in bad shape. We're in bad shape. All right, don't get mad at me. You should appreciate